Welcome to our daily devotion. The Methodist Church of Barbados invites you to sing, pray, and worship with us as we declare God's glory and celebrate His mighty acts. Almighty and everlasting Father, we, your people, come before you yet another another evening, Lord God, to give you worship, to give you praise. Heavenly Father, we assemble, Lord God, and we humble ourselves before you, Heavenly Father, as we adore your matchless name. 
Lord, you're an awesome God. You're an amazing God. You are a, a promise-making and a fulfilling God. You are Alpha and Omega. You are sovereign, Lord, and we give you all the glory, all the honor, and indeed all the praise that is due your matchless name. Heavenly Father, we pause and we confess, Lord, that indeed there have been times on our journey of this, of this life, Lord, where we have not walked in your will and we have not walked in your way. Heavenly Father, we've been pulled aside by the lures of the world. We've been pulled aside by the whispers of the enemy. We have been dazzled by the bright lights, Lord God, the, the things that glitter and we've strayed away from your path. Heavenly Father, we say even now, Lord God, search us. Move through your children and see, Lord God, the hearts of repentance. Lord God, move through us and see hearts are oriented and willing to do your will and to your way. See, Lord God, the hurt and the pain. Heavenly Father, see us and know, Lord God, that we are indeed sorry. And once again, we turn our eyes towards you. We turn our eyes toward you. We turn our hearts. We turn our spirits. We turn our entire beings toward you, Lord God. For it's only at your feet, only at your mercy seat, is true repentance and salvation found. Heavenly Father, we, we give you honor. We give you glory. We, we praise your matchless name. And we say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for yet another day. Thank you, Lord, for yet another opportunity to be in your presence and to worship you. Thank you, Lord God, that we can freely worship you without persecution or, or condemnation. Thank you, Lord, that you allow us the opportunity to spread your good news. Thank you, Lord, that even now you're moving in our situations. Thank you, Lord, that even now you have already made a way. Thank you, Lord, that the victory is already secure. Thank you, Lord, that you are a mighty God and you are mighty to save. Thank you, God, because you keep doing it and doing it and doing it again thank you lord even now for seeing me us as we are and still loving us regardless heavenly father we open our hearts we open our minds we open our entire spirits and we ask our god that you move even now just have your way in us oh god fill us to overflowing lord god that we may go out to be the ministers and the evangelists and, 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 the, and the vessels that you have crafted us to be so that we may continue to do the good work for your kingdom. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.
Psalm 91, Assurance of God's Protection. You who live in the shelter of the Most High, who abide in the shadow of the Almighty, will say to the Lord, My refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust, for he will deliver you from the snare of the hunter and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his pinions, and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and defense. You will not fear the terror of the night, or the arrow that flies by day, or the pestilence that stalks in darkness, or the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only look with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord your refuge, the most high your dwelling place, no evil shall befall you, no scourge come near your tent. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. On their hands, they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the adder, the young lion and the serpent you will trample underfoot. Those who love me, I will deliver. I will protect those who know my name. When they call to me, I will answer them. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue them and honor them. With long life, I will satisfy them and show them my salvation. Here ends the reading of the psalm.
I begin with a confession. The story of Job really scared me. I can still remember the feelings of fear and dread I felt after reading about Job and what he experienced. For many years, I held the secret fear in my heart of experiencing an ordeal such as Job's. So I tried to labor, study, and strive to do all that I could to avoid it. Many of you hearing this message may be able to identify with this a bit. Or perhaps not at all, but this was my reality. Now, from the path I had chosen and the decisions I had made, I believed that I was home free and that I was only being paranoid. Things were looking good. Things were trending upward quite nicely. Then, one day, my life took an unfortunate turn. I found myself in the middle of a hmm, semi-job situation. I could not believe it. I could not fathom where I had miscalculated or gone wrong. I could not understand nor believe that this, this was happening to me. I could not understand. Rather, I chose not to understand why God was doing this to me. For quite some time, I was at a loss. In, in fact, I was just going through the motions until one day a friend spoke this verse into my life. I was young, and now I am old, yet I have never seen the righteous forsaken or their children begging bread. Psalms 37, 25. It struck a powerful chord with me, because in the midst of my struggle and turmoil, I neglected to remember the rest of Job's story. I seem to have forgotten its progression, and I also seemingly forgot its amazing resolution. Why was that? How could I forget that at the end of Job's trial, God restored him and elevated him above what he was and what he had before? How, how could I have forgotten that indeed Job's latter days were greater than his former days? How could I have forgotten that Job himself uttered the words, Though he slay me yet? Will I trust him? Found in Job 13, 15. I forgot so much. Uh, like we sometimes forget. We forget because of the struggle or the threat of struggle. We forget uh, sometimes because of adversity or the threat of adversity. We sometimes forget uh, because of the challenge, the issues, uh, and or the problems, or rather the possibility that there may be challenges, issues, and problems. However, we also seem to forget that God does some of his most amazing work in, around, and through adversities. I'm reminded of a particular section in the story of Jacob. According to Genesis 32, 22 to 32, it reads, The same night he got up and took his two wives, his two maids, and his eleven children and crossed the ford of the Jabbok. He took them and sent them across the stream and likewise everything that he had. Jacob was left alone and a man wrestled with him until daybreak. When the man saw that he did not prevail against Jacob, he struck him on the hip socket, and Jacob's hip was put out of joint as he wrestled with him. Then he said, Let me go, for the day is breaking. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. So he said to him, What is your name? And he said, Jacob. Then the man said, You shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. For you have striven with God and with humans and have prevailed. Then Jacob asked him, Please tell me your name. But he said, Why is it that you ask my name? And there he blessed him. So Jacob called the place Peniel, saying, For I have seen God face to face, yet my life is preserved. The sun rose upon him as he passed Penuel limping because of his hip. Therefore, to this day, the Israelites do not eat the thigh muscle that is on the hip socket 
because he struck Jacob on the hip socket at the thigh muscle. We know Jacob and his struggles. In fact, Jacob was in several struggles all at once. He was struggling with his past. He was struggling with the possibilities of the impending future. And then here, God injects another struggle. However, Jacob, rather, however, Israel rose to the challenge. Israel took hold of this blessed opportunity and he would not let it go. But this would not have happened if Israel had not realized with whom he was wrestling. Jacob realized this was no ordinary man and this was no ordinary struggle. Today, like Jacob, Today, like Israel, today, brothers and sisters, we must realize that we are not just struggling on an earthly level. Today, we must realize that within our struggles exists a greater blessing, a greater outpouring, and within our struggle, there still exists Almighty God. I recall the Apostle Paul and his struggle with the thorn in his flesh. According to 2 Corinthians 12, 7 to 10, even considering the exceptional character of the revelations, therefore, to keep me from being too elated, a thorn was given me in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me, to keep me from being too elated. Three times I appealed to the Lord about this, that it would leave me, but he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for power is made perfect in weakness. So I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may dwell in me. Therefore, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions and calamities for the sake of Christ. For whenever I am weak, then I am strong. Paul was no stranger to struggle. Paul was no stranger to pain. Most importantly of all, Paul was no stranger to God, no stranger to Jesus, and no stranger to the Holy Spirit. Paul knew that even though he was being persecuted and even though he was under attack by the enemy, Paul sought to deep dive and dive deeper and deeper into Jesus Christ. Paul knew that this torment was not the end game. Paul knew that this was not God's plan or rather God's goal for his life. Paul knew that through this and through him, Christ would be glorified. Today, Paul serves as an example to us all. Paul shows that even when going through the fire, even when being in the lion's den, even when the storms rage and swirl around us, we can still know that we have already been saved. In our lives this very day, we are being reminded for our slight momentary affliction is producing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all measure. 2 Corinthians 4, 17 For you see, my brothers and sisters, Jesus' sacrifice on the cross is the ultimate expression of the ultimate trial paired with the ultimate victory. Jesus took our place on the cross at Calvary so that we can know that we have the victory. Jesus endured it all so that we could know that we have a prepared place in the kingdom. Jesus ascended to the cross so that we can lift our eyes to him in hope, in faith, in trust, and hallelujah in love. To be honest, I, I have no real title for this message. But what I encourage you to do as Christ 
even encourages me right now. I encourage you to continue to get to know him. Continue to meet with and get to know a very real and a very capable Jesus Christ. Continue to engage him as you encounter your very real and sometimes very personal challenges. Continue to press forward with him as you navigate this journey of life. Con continue to be steadfast and rooted in Christ Jesus, even as the world seeks to pull you in every direction other than his. There's a song that says, real Real, real, Christ so real to me. I love him because he gives us the victory. Many people doubt him, but I can't live without him. That is why I love him so. He's so real to me. With Job, with, with Paul, huh, with, with, with Christ, we see a very real manifestation. A very real set of situations. In this, a very real Christ wants to say to you today that he is right beside you. A very real Christ is saying to us today that he is going through it with you. Today, a very real Christ is reminding you that there is blessed opportunity in the midst of the opposition. Today, this very real Jesus Christ is reminding us Brothers and sisters, the battle is not yours. The battle is the Lord's. Therefore, be strong and bold. Have no fear or dread of them. Because it is the Lord your God who goes with you. He will not fail you or forsake you. Deuteronomy 31 verse 6. Every day, brothers and sisters. We face real situations in a very real world. I encourage you today as I encourage myself. Continue to build a precious and a positive relationship with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And watch how real and how amazing he can really be. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen, amen, and amen.
Thank you for being a part of our daily devotion. We trust it has been a blessing to you. Now together, let us hold fast to his word and may it dwell in all of us richly.